Well, what are you doing here? <laughs> I mean, I'm accused falsely. That's why I'm here. Why are you here? He said, I'm not accused falsely. I got bitter at the church. I left the church. I left my wife. I got into tourism for years, and I got into drug traffic, and I was arrested with, with a big load of drugs. And I'm, I'm doing 14 years. He said, I got remarried. I got children to come and see me. But he said, you know, I've never looked back. I wish I could fix things with God. And then I said, now I know why I'm here. <laughs> it's your fault. <laughs> God loves you so much, he brought me here to take care of your problem. And I said, now I understand. You, wanna, you want to fix things with God? He said, yes. Let's go up over here. I said, let's, let's pray together and let's make things right. He said, I've never looked back. I've been afraid to look back. I said, do your parents know you're here? No. I said, it was your brother who works at the division right now who used to send me my paycheck. Yeah, that's my brother. Does he know where you are? No, my family doesn't know me. My son knows where I am. Well, you need to talk to them. I said, your parents must be mighty old now. Yeah, they're in their 90s. And they don't know where you are? Man, don't let them die without talking to them. Well, I've been embarrassed. You don't have to be embarrassed anymore. We're going to make things right with God. And he did make things right. Amen. And we continued working there. And one day, the prison director came to me and he said, I've been watching you for all these last couple of weeks. He goes, you Adventists are incredible. You come in, supposedly you're criminals. And you bring in medical work, you bring in food, you bring in clothing. He goes, man, I've been watching to see if you hang out with any criminals. You don't even know any criminals. We got a lot of criminals in here. And if you were in the criminal world, you all know each other. He said, you would go by. They, they actually put the names of the criminals that you do, that you, they actually wrote down on your accusation, which criminals you do business with. Some of them are here. You don't even know them. I've been watching you. You walk right by them. There's 470 prisoners in that room. If you were friends, you would at least say hello to each other. It's obvious you all are innocent. He goes, so let me tell you what I did. I went down to the courthouse, and I looked up the prosecuting attorney, and I told him, you're a liar. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, well, but you know those two guys you threw in from the Adventist church? They're not criminals. Well, but, but you know how the system works. I mean, he did the airplane. Yes, I know how the system works. And I went and released. And if I, you don't do something about those charges, because they're innocent. He said, if you don't do anything, I'm going to write you up in a newspaper as a corrupt prosecuting attorney. He threatened him. And the guy said, well, well uh, no, don't do that. I'm, I'm sure we can work it out. <laughs> this is what he told me. And he goes, guess what? My heart started to hope. <laughs> he said, Guess what? He's agreed to drop the charges. Go get your things. I'm sending you home. Amen. Why didn't God tell me that ahead of time? <laughs> and he said, if you'll do the medical work, I'll set you free. That's not how God works. Amen. God wants us to trust him no matter what. Amen. Amen. That's the kind of trust that honors God and in turn allows him to carry out his will in our life. Amen. So many times we do our own thing. And when we do our own thing, we mess things up. God's way is always best, even if it leads to the fire or the water. He will carry you through. That's the promise. He will carry you through. But you have to trust Him. It's all about faith. And here this week, this is one of the gifts that God has given me, is the gifts of faith. And I want to share that with you, that conviction. I started, I told the Lord, I want to do, I want to do great things for you. I want to build on what my parents and in-laws gave me, but I want to go much further and reach much more people. And God said, okay, but you got some hard lessons to learn. You want to be special forces? Okay, you got it, but it's going to cost you. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what God is training today. And every time you go through a difficult time, remember, it's a stepping stone to trust God. Amen. It looks dark. It looks impossible. It looks like this is the end. It isn't. It's the beginning. Amen. If you just keep trusting, you come through that cloud. My wife and I fly through a lot of rough weather. And when you go through the rough weather, we look at the... We look, the airplane I'm flying right now has radar. I haven't had any airplanes before that had radar. This is color radar. It is real nice. It, it scans this way, and you can turn it to scan this way. So you can see if the weather, where it is ahead of you, and when you scan it up and down, vertical, 
it tells you if the weather above you or below you. So you can, you know, it's, it's a 3D image. That was a very expensive radar, but the guy who donated the airplane to us, he ordered it. That little piece of equipment cost $20,000. And he said, I want you to have it. And I go, man, luxuries of all kinds. I can't put it in. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm paying. I can't do it if I want to. So he put it in. And now I go to the weather. I go up, down, left, right. I go to this weather. But sometimes we go to the weather and it gets very turbulent. Boom, 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 boom. Bang, bang. If you don't have your seatbelt on, your your head, you get you get your, your spine adjusted when your head hits the ceiling. <laughs> bang, 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 bang. But eventually, an airplane, as you see, they have, they have this conception in the public that if an airplane goes to turbulence, the wing falls off. It doesn't fall off. Only if you go too fast. Whenever you have turbulence ahead, you just pull the power back. You go go, go below, your, below your maneuvering speed, which is the speed that's authorized for turbulence, and you just wait. Bang, 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 up, down, left, right, boom, 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 boom. And guess what? Eventually you come out the other side. Now, the airlines don't do that because the passenger might spill his water. <laughs> Maybe they have wine and they spill it. And so the passenger, the airplanes are always going this way and this way and up and down, anything to, well, that's what they should do there. I mean, the passenger's paying and they want to give them a smooth ride. But why do I care? My wife and I are the only pilots we're flying the airplane and we're used to it, we just go through the middle of it. <laughs> Besides, I don't want to go 50 miles or 80 miles around. We just, assuming it's not hail, assuming it's not severe, I mean, it has to be, if it's only rain and turbulence, we go through it. But sometimes the weather is so severe that you do have to go around it. But guess what? When you go to turbulence, fasten your seatbelt, trust your instruments. That's God. Amen. By the way, this is your instrument. You know, sometimes I give a talk and I have a jacket on. I have a jacket on, and right in the middle I tell this illustration. I take my jacket off and I have my pilots with four bars. They go, oh, the captain's suit. Yeah. What I'm trying to illustrate, what I'm trying to illustrate is that the church is like the airplane. It's powered with fuel called the Holy Spirit. Amen. But airplanes full of fuel crash sometimes. Because the pilot doesn't know how to use the instruments or trust them. John F. Kennedy, Jr. Crashed in his own airplane because he had more money than he had experience. Bought himself a big, fast airplane. He, his, his family has plenty of money. So he bought a fast airplane and he went with his wife flying and they got into bad weather. He didn't have finished his training yet. His instruments could have saved him. Nope, he tore the wings off the airplane. And he went, shh. What happened? The instruments. You got to trust your instruments. Amen. You look at your instruments, and what your instruments say, that's the way it is. You don't trust your feelings. You don't trust your, what your ears tell you. I'm turning left, I'm turning right. You trust what the instruments say. And if it says you're banking to the left, you it. If it says you're banking to the right, you bring it back again. If it says you're climbing or descending, you bring it back to level again. And you do not believe anything except what your eyes tell you on those instruments. That's this. You see the parallel, right? And you will get through the storm, and you will find that you will get through safely. And there's a big storm ahead. Big storm. And God will take us through safely. But that's a story where I began my learning process with the Lord in prison. And let me finish by telling you this. I hate prison. <laughs> Every time I drive by a prison, I go, I hate you, prison. <laughs> I know there's criminals in there, and some of them probably deserve to be there. But you know what? There's a lot of innocent people in the prison. Oh, a lot of innocent people. Very true. And even if you're guilty, I still feel sorry for them because it's sin true. did that to them. Yeah. Right? Yes. But I was driving, just after I got out of prison, I was in Florida with my wife, driving down the road, and suddenly, on the radio, we interrupt this program to tell you that four prisoners have escaped from maximum security prison. They are believed to be armed and dangerous. Lock your houses, lock your cars, do not pick up any hitchhikers. Now, normally that makes people go, right? If you're hitchhiking, nobody will pick you up. Guess what? 
an instant reaction. Every time a criminal escapes, I go, yes, they got away. One more got away. <laughs> <laughs> that's how much I hate prisons. Now, I know that some people deserve to be in there, but I hate prisons. And so I made up my mind, whatever it costs me, I don't care how much criticism it takes, how many people understand or don't understand, I don't care. I am going to set prisoners free Amen. from sin. Amen. I'm going to go everywhere in the world that God sends me, and I'm going to put into place media, education, evangelism, radio, medical work, whatever it is, anything to set people free from Satan. Because Satan is a prison, is a prison prisoner holder number one, the prison house of sin. And I am determined to set those people free. You know what? God's the one doing it. You understand? But I've decided, Lord, count. Here am I. Send me. And God said, it won't be easy. Ah, I always love it when, when you hear of, you remember a long time ago when in, uh, in Uganda, they, they hijacked a plane and they took, they took all these prisoners, uh, all these hijacked people to Entebbe Airport. Some of you old enough to remember that? <coughs> Anybody remember? <laughs> Maybe the older we get, the more to remember, right? <laughs> well, they took the, the, the hijackers took this full airplane and, and they had a lot of, it came from, came from Israel, I recall, and they had a lot of Jewish people on board, and they, they held them there, and they they were they were uh, having they were holding them hostage, and they were said they were going to start killing them every hour if they didn't pay this all this hostage stuff, and and the whole world was going. You can imagine the family members. Yeah. One night, in the middle of the night, with no lights of any kind, mm -hmm. just using night scopes, and and navigation equipment, the Israeli. The Israeli government landed all these military planes on the far end of the runway. And the whole field filled up with soldiers. And suddenly, boom! They burst through. They put in these big explosives that shock people. I mean, it's like it's a bomb that when, when it goes off, you go into shock. It doesn't kill you. You go into shock because it gives you such a bang! Like somebody hit you with a baseball bat. It doesn't, it doesn't permanently injure you. It just... You can't do anything. So they, they exploded that, and they went in, and they rescued every single one. Now, that to me, though I'm, I don't care which country it is and what happens, all details, but to me, is exactly what I would like to do with Satan's prisons. <laughs> go where nobody's gone before. Go where the darkest there is, and go where sin has reigned, and <clears throat> just say, Lord, take me there. Go there where he lays it on your heart. And God will help you to rescue those people just like that. Amen. Amen. And that's what our job is. We are special forces. We need to develop special forces mindset. Wherever the, by the way, you know what special forces do? They take commands from directly from the commander in chief. Listen carefully. Today, most church members take commands from humans. Most church employees are are respecters of men more than respecters of God. Amen. You obey your president, you obey the next president, you obey the next level president. <clears throat> Even if you know something is of God and they tell you no, most employees will say, well, I was told not to do that. Mm -hmm. And I've learned that we gotta change our mindset. Yeah. Of course we wanna be loyal to the church. I mean, am I supposed to be loyal to my wife? Of course, but if I'm more loyal to my wife than to God, there's a problem. Our first loyalty is to God rather than man. Amen. We must be loyal to each other. We must be loyal to our spouses. We must be loyal to our administration. We must be loyal to the church. But never in first place. First place, we're loyal to God, and then the loyalties fall into place. Amen. So we've got to get this clear. Special forces are always loyal first to God, and then everybody else. Is that clear? Amen. God's going to do a great work. Greater days are ahead. Special training is difficult. But after you go through it, I don't have any muscles. In Spanish, they call me the chemist, el químico. And I said, why? Because, David, you have nothing of physical. 
<laughs> you don't understand Spanish. <laughs> he would have left. <laughs> Physico is both a physicist and a bodybuilder. So, David, you must be a chemist because you're definitely not a body, you're definitely not a chemist. I mean, you're definitely not a physicist, right? But it has a double meaning. Since you have, you don't have a body build, you're not a bodybuilder, you must be a chemist. And I said, well, it's true, I don't, I don't know. I don't. My youngest brother, 10 years younger, he became a bodybuilder. And we just laughed at him. He worked every day and every day and every day. I can't eat salt, I can't eat this. One day, my mother opened the refrigerator and says, what is that dead thing in my refrigerator? My little brother said, that's a chicken. I have to eat it because I have to build muscles. Get that dead thing out of my refrigerator. <laughs> And don't ever bring back anything in my refrigerator. So my brother got some other alternatives. He, be, he became one of the first vegetarian uh, bodybuilders. <laughs> and you know, one day he came home with a trophy, and he came back with another trophy, and one day he brought a magazine, front page of Muscle Magazine. And let me tell you, that's, that's something when you can make the Muscle Magazine. <laughs> <laughs> My little brother. Me? I'm sorry. I don't do that. <laughs> I like to run. My wife and I, Becky and I, we just ran in a marathon uh, in San Diego a couple years ago with 32,000 people. Now I'm competitive. I like to run, right? And I like to pass people up. And I see people with the flag of Mexico. Viva Mexico! I tap them on the back. Viva Italia! You know, and, and they would run along and they would, yay, yay, yay. And we were just running. Sometimes they pass me up, but, but it's fun to pass others. But my wife, she's not competitive. But when she was running with 32,000 people, she started loving to pass people up. <laughs> and I never saw this in my wife before. <laughs> but when you have that many people, it adds energy. It makes you want to do that. I saw a t-shirt that said, Dear Lord, please let there be somebody behind me to read this. <laughs> <laughs> but running a race, it takes endurance. It takes persistence. <laughs> Proportion to your enthusiasm and perseverance will be the success given. But you can't give up. Understand? Amen. I watched my brother never give up. If we're going to be successful in special forces for God, hang on to him. Fill your mind. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. I'm going to die. No, you're not. Keep going. Yes, I'm dying. No, you're not. <laughs> I can survive it. God will give me the strength. And someday we'll emerge prepared and anointed for the battle. Amen. 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 You and me as we pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, our lives are filled with many illustrations of your wonderful care for us. Amen. Certainly, Lord, we have nothing but gratefulness. We're alive today, every single one of us, because you saved us time and time and time again. We belong to you over and over again. You have saved us, and we belong to you over and over again. You deserve to have all of us. May we not Take what is yours for ourselves. May we place ourselves in your hands. May we surrender to you and never give us the persistence and the spirit of willingness to trust you and get, I mean, increase our faith, Lord, because we need more of it. And even though life is filled with joys and with tears and sadness and difficulties and challenges, there is, there is a great reward in following you because we can see what you are doing and this gives us great confidence that we can trust you to finish what you have begun. Be with us now this special week. Thank you for this beautiful fellowship we're enjoying. We place ourselves in your hands now, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hey, what's going How on, brother? Bro? Good to see you, oh, course, man. <laughs> we got to talk a little bit more, man. <laughs> YouTube, right? Oh, man. What's your take on um, Carson? Oh, man, we got to have to talk about that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you, people are watching you right now. Oh. <laughs> I mean, just, good to uh, see you. Bro. Good to see you. So, um, anyway, just wanted to share that with everybody. And uh, hope you guys enjoyed the, um, the testimony. I hope you were blessed. And you know how <laughs> Brother Gates is there. He's got some, uh, he's got some jokes, but, but, um, I hope you really got the message. All right. God bless. Um, going to be broadcasting again a little bit later. I probably, um, broadcast, uh, what 
to my sister's name again. I don't know why I can't remember right now, but she's one of the directors of a, a lifestyle retreat and um, health lifestyle center in uh, Australia called Misty Mountain. Misty Mountains, um, Barbara, Sister Barbara. So um, I'll pro I'm gonna probably broadcast her message as well. She's gonna be dealing with um, you know, the health message, medical missionary work, and I'm not sure exactly what principles she's gonna be dealing with, but it uh, should be a blessing. And um, I spoke earlier, and I'm probably gonna speak to close out the day, but um, I don't know, I might broadcast my, um, I might broadcast my presentation. I'm not exactly sure if I will. Um, maybe if you guys want me to, I will, but I'm not, I'm not sure that I will. But all right, God bless everyone. And um, once again, I hope that you are benefited by this. Hope you are blessed by it. Please go ahead and share it. Share via Facebook, share via Twitter. Okay, I see, yes, do that. Share via Facebook, share via Twitter, share via Periscope. All you have to do is swipe from left to right. If you're on an iOS device, or swipe from down to up. So swipe from left to right, or swipe from down to up. And yes, I'm going to charge my phone, princess. All right, so we're out here in Samoa. Hold on. So we're out here in the island of Samoa right now. I'm on, don't be shy. I don't have anything to be shy for. But uh, we're out here in Samoa, as you can see, and just kind of on second level where you can see the tin roof. And, Oh, definitely, Simon. Um, and yeah, just giving you guys an opportunity to see a little bit of what it's like when we come out here into the. Um, give you opportunity to see a little bit of like what uh, a little bit of what it's like when we come out here in the mission field and do some meetings like this for uh, people that really don't get meetings like this at all, messages like all like this at all. This is. The first time any type of meeting like this has been held out here and um, in Samoa, so it's really a blessing for us to be able to be here and to do this. And um, it's a fit. It begins with a V, V-L-E, or something like that. I don't remember. v L. -E. <laughs> I'm sorry. To be quite honest, when I go to different places in the world, sometimes I get on the plane and I really don't even remember where I'm going until I get there. Um, and then when I get here, I don't even remember where I'm at. I'm just really focused on being here to do what I've got, what I'm here to do. But, I don't know, some other people are not like that. They, they know everything, all the specific details, and you know, everybody's different. But um, uh, I guess when I get back on here, I'll let you know the exact um, village that we're in. All right, so God bless, take care, and um, <laughs> my brother Simon, and um, and that's it, all right? So take care, everybody, God bless. No, actually, it's true, that's just, that's just the way that it is. It's not a, it's not a line, it's not a line from, from the video, it's just, it's actually the reality. That's something that I say a lot, so. I guess I, I've just put it into the video. All right, guys, so take care. God bless. And um, I'll see you later. As always.